If you play online games, then most likely, along with your poor personal life, you often encounter such idiots. Some players do not really appreciate the philosophy of fair competition and let's just say install certain software to enjoy guaranteed victory. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Cheating is not just a way to bypass the grind, get free resources, or humiliate your opponent in an online game. It is also a huge shadow business. Take these games for example. If even 1% of users buy cheats for $10 a month, that brings in tens of millions of dollars. So today, we'll be taking a look at what cheats are, how they work, who creates them, and what you need to learn to create them. When an ordinary gamer, yeah, just like you and me, is challenged to either spend dozens of hours obtaining a skin or pay money and get everything at once, many choose the latter without hesitations. Asian bot farms that farm items have long been a staple of many online games. For these guys, grinding is clearly the main mechanic in gameplay. So it's no surprise there are actual real factors for mining such items. At least bot farms, cheats, and automated programs collect experience, resources, and items in online games for further sale. So it's a full-fledged shadow economy. In addition, Asia remains the main region where software is created that allows people to cheat in competitive online games. This is despite the fact that in China, the use or distribution of cheats is actually illegal. It's a real crime, not just a violation of the rules of the game. And if you get caught, you won't just lose 15,000 social credit points, you'll go to jail for five years. But who does that stop? Especially when we're talking about a multi-million dollar shadow business. So a few years ago, PUBG Mobile publisher Tencent, together with the Chinese police, exposed a large gang called Chicken Drumstick. And these guys were selling cheats for online games. They were selling cheat subscriptions ranging from $10 to $200 a month and had tens of thousands of customers around the world. 10 developers, marketers, and server administrators were arrested and a collection of expensive supercars and assets worth over $46 million were found in their office. So yes, it's a very lucrative business. The creators of cheats and owners of such bot farms are just waiting for these monotonous and boring moments in games to cash in on our desire to get something here and now, to defeat others, or simply to make the game easier. They skillfully look for loopholes in game mechanics and offer their solutions. But the only way to avoid worrying about cheats in online games is to play on your own server where you control everything. And Ping Players is the best way to help you do that. PingPlayers.com is the easiest way to launch your game server without any technical headaches. Their servers launch in literally less than a minute and their AI assistant will do all the technical work for you. Install mods, set rules, so that you can get the exact game that you want. The ping will be stable, without lag or jumps, because they have over 20 servers around the world. This guarantees smooth gameplay, even in the hottest moments. Plus, Ping Players has a huge library of games, over 25 games with new ones added every single week. They support all the hits that are currently trending. CS2, PAL World, Rust, DayZ, Ark Survival, everything you need for survival, raids, and complete madness. And the coolest thing, and I guess also the most helpful thing, is that they have a 24-7 support team that are all real gamers who created this service and know what they really need. So if you want complete control over your gaming world, follow the link down below and enter the code RADICAL35 to get a 35% discount. Ping players. Your server, your rules, your game. Now let's find out what kinds of cheats exist. Cheats can be divided into several categories. External, internal, and network. External cheats are programs that run in a separate process. I think you've heard of, or even maybe used, Cheats Engine, Art Money, and similar programs. In short, any running program works in RAM and stores the data it needs to work right now. When your character has 100 HP, that number is stored somewhere in RAM. With Cheat Engine and Art Money, you can explore the game's memory, find the address where the value you need is stored, and rewrite it. 
It's that easy. It's a pretty simple principle that many external cheats are based on. Working with memory is the basic principle of external cheats. But such cheats are suitable for single player games that do not require an internet connection. You just play some old GTA, enter the code for infinite weapons and infinite life, and that's it. But if that's clear, here's a question for you. How do hackers make it so that these dickheads with aimbots and wall hacks can use software that changes not only their RAM, but also all the other players on the server? Well, that's actually quite interesting. Of course, modern cheats and anti-cheat systems are much more complex than those that existed 20 years ago. Nowadays, anti-cheats monitor the system in search of external cheats and protect the game with drivers, restrict descriptors, and memory writing. This, this guys, is where internal cheats come to our aid. Such cheats are embedded in other programs, or even in the game itself, and can change the code beyond recognition. If you need to write an internal cheat for a PC game, you need to be knowledgeable about game development, game engines, programming languages, and of course, have reverse engineering skills. But what the fuck is reverse engineering? When a programmer develops a program, they write a code, which is then interpreted, compiled, and linked. In general, it turns into byte-level binary meat that can only be understood by our computer or other virtual machines. The result is a finished program that we can run. The task of reverse engineering is to turn this mince back into meat, or, in other words, to study how the program works and understand how it was written. Of course, programmers don't sit in front of blank byte code. They use special programs. For example, IDA allows you to easily understand how each function works. Once the hacker has figured out this mess, they start writing additional code that changes the logic of the program. For example, giving us the ability to see through walls or automatically aim. Cheats are most often written in C, C++, CSP, and the code is compiled into a DLL, which is a type of file that contains a set of functions and code that can be used by different programs at the same time. In simple terms, it's like a separate library with ready-made tools that programs can access as needed, instead of each program writing this code for itself. After that, the cheat creators inject all of this directly into the game in various ways. But internal cheats also have their own protection methods, such as monitoring loaded libraries, checking digital signatures, and so on. This is essentially how various anti-cheats work. They constantly monitor, track and block third-party programs or changes in the game. Although, of course, they don't always succeed. And, of course, it gets more complicated every single year since multiplayer games require a server, which means traffic between the client and the server. But how the hell can cheats get around all of this? This is where network cheats come in. High-level hackers have found another way to cheat in online games by replacing the traffic itself. To do this, you can set up your own proxy server and replace for example, information about the game currency balance in GTA Online. The game client sends information about 1,000 GTA dollars to the server, and the proxy server rewrites it as 5 million. But before we can pull off this trick, we need to study what the traffic itself looks like. To do this, you can use something like Wireshark. Damn, honestly, I hope that after this video I won't create a new Chi business syndicates. I'm just telling you how it's done. That's all. All right. I, listen, I'm just telling you how it's done. Okay. So Wireshark is an open packet analyzer. It is generally used for network troubleshooting, but some internet geniuses who rarely leave their homes and imagine themselves as the main character of the TV series, iRobot, use this program to analyze and track data transmitted over the network. Hackers track all of the packets passing through the network, analyze them and write their own proxy server. For example, in JavaScript. So yes, any hacker who has access to your network can find out what the fuck you're jerking off to. But there is one big but with online games. If the game is not old, it most likely has encryption and no proxy server will help. It simply will not understand the transmitted data. We will either have to deal with encryption, which is very difficult by the way, or go back to external and internal cheats and manipulate the game's memory again. For example, before sending data to the server, the game must collect information into a specific structure, then encrypt it, and send it back. 
and we need to wedge ourselves into this little process and rewrite the data before it turns into this mess of characters. This can again be done with external or internal cheats, but this video is specifically dedicated to reviewing cheats in multiplayer games. And external and internal cheats will not help you in online games. Yo, I should be like, I should be a teacher right now. Give me like a fucking chalkboard and shit. Be writing notes for you guys, take down. We can draw ourselves a large balance in GTA Online, or purchase all of the skins in Fortnite or CS2 using internal cheats, but what's the point if other players won't see it at all? Because it will only be changed on your computer, not on the game server. Therefore, such cheats will not help at all. And I will also say that you're right if you think that all of the information above is useless. So that's it from Radical Cap. Thanks for watching and see you later. Okay, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Of course I'll tell you how hackers manage to hack online games. That's what you came here for. Don't worry. I understand. So, we receive statistics from the server, such as our money, lives, enemy locations, and so on. Therefore, we need to send the same information to the server without any changes so that it doesn't suspect anything. Our game client always tells the server what actions we have taken, where we shot, and what resources we picked up. That's where we need to dig. Instead of reporting that we made one headshot, we can send information about three headshots and so on. But this is more complicated than it seems because the server will check the messages. If we have zero money and we send the server information about buying a yacht in GTA Online, the server will check our balance before confirming the purchase and reject our request. This is called validation. But the real question is how can we get around this? The ticking method is ideal here. And the more complex the game, the more parameters need to be checked and the more mistakes programmers make during development, so even more flaws in validation can be found. So cheaters simply spam the game with tons of requests to the server to bypass this validation and crack the game code. Of course, this takes a lot of times, so good cheats are not given away for free. And here is when the question arises, who can play faster and more efficiently than a bot specifically configured for this purpose. In principle, you can write it in your favorite programming language, but please don't, especially if you live in China. I think you figured that out, but now I'd like to tell you how the most terrible cheat ever created by mankind works. A cheat that everyone who plays online shooters absolutely hates. A cheat that gives an advantage that no other cheat can give. Aimbot. In games such as CS2, Galerant, and Apex Legends, accurate aiming is everything. Some players spend hundreds, even thousands of hours perfecting this skill, but there are others who simply download special programs, aimbots, that do all of the work for them, automatically targeting the enemy. This is, of course, unfair to honest players, but it is technologically very interesting because these bots work on the basis of complex mathematics and physics. To understand how aimbot actually works, you need to dive into the world of 3D graphics and math. I know, it sucks, but you gotta do it. In most modern games, players' positions are described by three coordinates, X, Y, and Z. Like three dimensions that together form a shape. Imagine a three-dimensional graph where each object has its own exact location. So, in order for an aimbot to target, it must know the exact location of the enemy in the space. Next, a vector is formed in the game, an imaginary arrow pointing from your character to the enemy. The vector describes not only the distance to the target, but also the direction. To calculate the necessary viewing angles, tilt and rotation, that will help direct the character's gaze precisely at the target. The aimbot uses trigonometric functions, in particular arctangent. That's science, bitch! Using these functions, the bot calculates the angle at which to look in order to aim at the enemy. When all of the calculations are ready, these angles are recorded directly into the game's memory. Remember, we already talked about this. As a result, cheaters get instant and automatic aiming without any effort, while honest players get their asses burned. There are even mechanisms that make this process smoother and more natural so that it doesn't arouse suspicion from other players or anti-cheat systems. This combination of mathematics, computer science, and game design makes aimbots an example of how complex technologies can be applied even in the most ordinary things such as playing video games. Although it does go against the spirit of fair play, 
the technical side of this process is quite deep and interesting. So next time you see an idiot with a $10 aimbot, remember that behind it lies hours of calculations, programming, and three-dimensional mathematics. And quite often, a broken family. So as you can see, the topic of cheating is very broad with many different approaches of varying levels of complexity. Meanwhile, the war between cheats and anti-cheat systems continue. It is constantly becoming more and more sophisticated and complicated, but one thing remains unchanged. To write cheats, you need the knowledge of programming languages, reverse engineering skills, significant knowledge of mathematics, or be Chinese. Fuck you.